So, um, hi, I'm Malvika Sharan. I'm a community manager of the Turing Way. Um, and I've been working with you for over a year on this project, along with Bernice Batu, who's not here today with us. So uh, that's us. You can always, always reach out to us if you have any idea that you want to share with us or if you want to become part of our journey. So three of us came together because we believe that to truly impact our society, we need to share our science openly and make it freely available online for others. Um, and today we are in a space that most of you also believe in the same principles and therefore it's a, a good place to be and we don't need a lot of explanation in this brand. So open leaders, the idea comes from Mozilla open leadership framework and it has been designed uh, to empower others who are interested in becoming collaborators or leaders in their own communities. There are a few things that you would hear a lot is design, empowerment, collaboration and inclusion. Science can obviously advance only when we are sharing our work with others so that others can build on what we are doing. Uh, but often researchers are skeptical. Uh, they don't wanna share their work for some of the fears such as being scooped, being criticized, being found out. A lot of people um, also mention that they often experience imposter syndrome because suddenly they have to be open uh, to the world. So how to work openly without being scientifically vulnerable? The Open Life Science Program helps early researchers and potential academic leaders in becoming open science ambassador. Uh, this is a program that we run for anyone who's interested. We call here early stage researcher, but really there is no barrier to where you are at. With our mentees and mentors, uh, we together explore the important concepts and principle in open science and we apply them in our work one step at a time. So it's a 15 week long personal mentorship and cohort based training. It is largely, largely dependent on the idea of people coming with their own motivation and own project. Um, a lot of times this could happen that our mentees come with the project and they don't really have the time, but that's good enough for us. Uh, we really stress on their motivation rather than what the outcome they are intending at the end of 15 weeks. Again, uh, open leadership frameworks, it, it comes from Mozilla Open Leadership. Uh, it has been collabor collaboratively designed by a number of open researchers uh, who have collected set of principles, practices and skills that people can use to mobilize their communities. This framework designs and build projects that empowers others to collaborate within communities by enhancing understanding, sharing, participation and inclusion. So this is a table where we generally go through each of them, but um, to summarize the, the, the table itself is that we focus on designing, building and empowering the community by enhancing understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion. And within all these categories, there are certain focuses that we can visit every time we're developing our project. For example, if we think about communication, who are we building our communication for? Can they really understand uh, and find out what we are trying to communicate with them? Are we really designing our project for people to understand? Are we really sharing it so they can use it? How is our event planning? Is, is it open for anyone for their participation and inclusion? So there are many aspects that you can visit in terms of all these six topics. So obviously everybody perceives open science differently. You can have open science where the intention is to share data. You can have open source software, open source hardware. You can have open access such as how can you share your papers and protocol, preprints, open reviews, open education, citizen science, or scientific networks. And all these communities will approach their project differently. However, the principle that we, are, we teach in our program applies to all of them. So one example is that in 2012 study shows that 160 tech companies found that the level of strategic intent in openness, not openness alone, correlates with effective market performance. 
Um, so this this would generally come to those people who have uh, a lot of doubt about where open science and inclusion collide together. But I'm assuming a lot of you don't come from that place. Therefore, I can leave it up to you to go ahead and read that in your own time. So we, we don't want openness to be a thoughtless default. We want to design openness into our project from the beginning. And with our OLS mentoring and training, uh, we allow our mentees to lead their project openly, share their work effectively, and bring a positive culture change to their communities. So at this point, I'll stop and I'll let you talk. Okay, thank you, Alvika, for introducing the program. Uh, so I'm going to share the same set of slides, uh, but present the second half and that looks right share okay um are you seeing my oh i'll try to put it in present mode and see if this still works like i intended dun, dun, dun. and what about now can you see the slides no <laughs> Yes, it's not in the full screen, though. That's OK. How about now? Perfect. Brilliant. OK, right. So um, basically, we will give you a quick idea of what we will be doing, um, or what we're actually what we are doing at the minute in uh, terms of the open life science uh, training. Uh, so we are in the middle of cohort one, uh, which is a group of 20 projects with 29 different project leaders. So some, some groups are teams, some are individual project leaders. Um, and each of these projects has a mentor who provides them with one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, so that means that one week they meet with their mentor for around about half an hour. And then every other week we do a full cohort learning. Um, this is an activity that we're going to give you a bit of uh, experience a day with some more breakout groups, but you probably already have an idea of the feel because the collaborations workshop is very much the same sort of spirit in terms of lots of interactive discussion as well as presentation. Um, so I will walk through what we will be doing. Um, boom, boom, boom. How do I make the slides advance? There we go. So. Uh, having met with your mentor in the very first week, having um, just gotten to know one another and discuss what your project is, the second week of our cohort training is when we actually start to meet together with one another and, and learn a bit about open science. Uh, so early on, we maybe have a project idea, and so we start reflecting on what that means if we want to actually make it into an open community, into something that we're sharing openly. Uh, so we have the, con the concept of open canvas, um, so all of this just about is taken from Mozilla materials, um, but the open canvas uh, basically just is, it's, it's almost like writing or jotting down a tiny business plan or a development plan. It's strategic goals and who's going to be using this and why you're creating it. Um, and sometimes it feels a bit like an exercise that feels um, like it's form filling, but it helps you to reflect what you're actually going to be doing and what you're going to be learning. Uh, and also what sort of value exchanges you're having between yourself and the community you wish to reach and you wish, with whom you wish to interact with. Um, and you might see that the very, link on the very bottom here um, for week two, you can actually see our recording for the original call, the syllabus and all of our, our notes are actually available online. So it's very, very by its nature open. We are practicing what we preach uh, as well as just telling people to be open. We're sharing these things. Um, so you skip a week, you've spoke with your mentor again in what week three, and then we move on to the week four cohort training, where we start thinking, okay, we have an idea of what our project is and why we've been doing it. So now we're going to start thinking forward, thinking ahead. Let's try and build a space where we can bring other people in. Um, and so that might mean that you have a code of conduct, you might have contribution guidelines saying, if you want to join my project, if you want to help out, here's what you do. Uh, you will also add a project vision and a roadmap. So uh, that means that you have an idea what's going on, but if you put that openly, then other people can also discuss it, comment on it, contribute as well. So it, it's uh, sharing both ways, both for yourself and for others. And then thinking forward to the next week, we will be having another mentor call on week five. And when we have a group cohort call, these interactive calls, the next one is open science. This is where we veer off the original Mozilla materials slightly. So Mozilla, um, it started, it's all about the uh, sharing of um, 
sharing of what you're doing on GitHub. But we've also said we want this to be relevant to science, but we, we've uh, focused on some other topics as well. So we talk about some project management skills, including agile and iterative development, uh, just to help people get an idea of how to break things down into smaller tasks and then come back on them and reflect on them and repeat. We talk about uh, open source software. I think one thing that's definitely been hammered home today in um, some of the presentations is that if you're doing research, your code should be open uh, and your data should be open and also um, hardware. So that's, um, I think, a really important thing in science is that often um, scientific hardware can cost millions. Uh, so talking about how it can be open and shareable and obtainable by others is a really important part of uh, open science. You know, it shouldn't be that only rich people can do science. And very often the fact is that the things aren't actually that expensive to create so long as you have the open um, plans for them as well. So if we look on to our next cohort call, we decided one single hour and a half session wasn't possibly going to be big enough to fit all of the open science that we wanted to fit in. So we have a second set of open science lessons in our um, group calls. And so we have both traditional and non-traditional methods of sharing. The traditional one would be, of course, papers, publications. Uh, but many people have pointed out if we just chase papers, then our science may not be as good as we hope. Uh, so we have other things, for example, um, we've talked about preprints, Malvika mentioned earlier, we had someone talking about open protocols. Basically, we're of the opinion, we try to teach that if you have a scientific output, no matter what it is, it should be shared. Um, and not just outputs, but methods um, and, and ways of working as well. That should be considered an output, in fact. Um, and one thing actually I didn't mention is that each week we actually bring on guest speakers. So for example, for this week here, we had people talking from F1000. We had uh, someone talking about citizen science. We had uh, protocols.io speaking. So we try and make sure that we have a broad range of experts who are working in the field and who know how this is applied as well. Uh, week 10. This is where we start talking about inclusive community um, and how to empower the people who you're bringing in. Uh, so this talks about bringing in diverse perspectives. I'm sure everyone's heard about scenarios where, let's say, um, someone's developed, um, or I think there's a hand soap that could only detect pale colored hands and it didn't see darker colored hands, for example. Uh, so we, it, it, we want to emphasize how important it is to bring in different perspectives to make sure that your things, um, but both that it feels like an inclusive community, but that whatever you're doing actually considers the perspectives it should be considering as well. Uh, we also had a great guest speaker who talked about designing against information abuse and thinking about the consequences of what you do and saying that it's not enough to create something. You also need to make sure that if something is open, that things are shared appropriately. Think about other ways that this thing could be misused and can you make the good paths easier? Um, and we also talk about uh, some of the things like implicit bias. So there's a fantastic, uh, Harvard-based survey where you can learn a bit about implicit biases that you may have. Uh, if you click through onto the week 10 cohort, learning, um, cohort training link, there is actually a link there. It's definitely something that can be very eye-opening and make you feel uncomfortable. But we talk about the fact that if you realize that you have an unconscious bias, for example, that you can then work against it, uh, which is a meaningful and important thing, I think, to help make sure that your projects are as inclusive as possible. Um, and then the final two weeks, oh no, this, this one here, I forgot about that one. <laughs> I shouldn't, it's happening tomorrow. Um, so self-care and ally skills. So if you've been involved in working in what probably is a volunteer project and it's a project where you're working with lots and lots of other people and you're thinking really hard and spending a lot of time and effort on the things that you're working on, then you probably need to be taking some time for some self-care and not just working 24 seven to exhaustion, trying to, to um, produce whatever you're creating, trying to work with your volunteers and your community. You need to be thinking about yourself as well. Um, and then we also talk about um, mental health care and ally skills. So once you've been thinking about yourself and taking care of yourself, uh, then we say, make sure that you're taking care of others as well and support them in the way that you should be. Um, and then we have career guidance. So we have been now been going through a good number of different uh, ways to develop your project, things to be considering, and you might want to be thinking about where you're going in the future. So whilst the program is aimed at academics, 
that doesn't mean that's where you have to stay, for example. So we will be having a speaker who's talking about leaving academia and transitioning outwards. We talk about people who are PIs or people working in industry on open science and what did I just press? There we go. Um, and so, we, yeah, we'll be having some guest speakers on that as well. And that's actually happening tomorrow in our cohort call. And then the final thing that we have is we have two calls where we have people present what they've been doing. So now we've been working for several months together um, and we reflect on what we've been doing and we practice what we've been doing and then eventually we actually present it to the public. So this is the graduation. This is the final moment of look at all of the sweat and the toil and the thought that we've been putting into this. Uh, and then people share all of the open, exciting projects that they've been working on. And that's happening in um, probably about a month's time. So if anyone's interested, we will at some point soon probably be sharing that publicly and um, saying if you want to come and watch this and see some of the exciting open science projects that have been developed, then you can probably come and join that. And do I have any more slides? I do. Okay, right. Yeah, and the final thing is that whilst uh, we're partway through our journey at the minute, um, so like I mentioned, we're on week 11 of a 15 week program. We are trying to collect information about what we're doing and where we're going so that we can, come, we can improve this. So we've been thinking about adding a third open science module for advanced methods. And we've also been thinking about long-term viability strategies as well. So for example, right now we've been offering this 100% with um, all of the mentors, our unpaid and volunteer, as are the founders, as are our guest speakers. So if this is something that potentially is interesting in your organization, you're welcome to fork our materials. Those are 100% online, open, those can be reused. Uh, if you're interested in getting people to deliver this as well, for example, then we'd also be very happy to talk about ways that we could arrange to do that um, to help give us a bit of a more long-term viability and a funded model. And here are some of the credits that we have. So I've, I've said Mozilla a lot of times because uh, this is what launched this program. A lot of our materials are from this, um, but it's also been a lot of our sweat and toil. Um, Abby in particular, she uh, launched Mozilla Open Leaders. Without her, this would not exist. But huge shout out to Malvika and to Berenice, who, aren't here, who, who isn't here today, to our experts and our mentors who have been giving up their own time for free just to help other people learn about open science. Um, and to our project leads who have currently spent two and a half months just thinking about their projects and participating in all of our exciting calls. Um, and then there's a few other places. So um, SSI has helped been helping to support us as well. We're involved with Elixir, which is a UK bioinformatics network. Embo, um, is what they've been providing some resources and was Malvika's employer. The Open Bioinformatics Foundation, uh, Galaxy Project and Denby. Um, Alan Turing Institute, again, that's another one of Malvika's employers and strongly um, aligned with our institutional uh, values, I think I would say and the University of Manchester, which is uh, where I'm studying at the minute. So, so we have a lot of people who've been supporting us throughout this journey. And so we can't possibly say it was just us. And I think that's everything I have for the screen. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments for myself or Malvika at this point? So I, I have a question. Um, so Joe Malfica, it's very impressive uh, for a first round as well, 20 projects with 29 people plus finding the me mentors. Um, so I'm wondering whether you could expand a bit about the uh, lead up to the start uh, because you really walked through the program, but I can imagine there was a whole bunch going on before that uh, because it sounds like this is a very um, successful community building strategy that you've applied. So I'm very interested to hear more. I can start. Um, so you, me and Bernice, we had been quite involved in other open source communities and we came from a lot of uh, personal contacts. So all the mentors are in general people that we knew who really cared about open science. So for example, Andrew is one of them because we knew Andrew from SSI fellowship. Um, and we reached out to people who we, who we knew would help us in the first round because um, we had nothing to offer to them at this point. 
So I think it, your your biggest power is in your network. Um, to invest in your network and trust them that they will support you in this. Anything else to add, Yo? Um, I think that's the main thing, really. I think you summed up perfectly. We we have people who are amazing stars that we could rely on, and I guess hopefully they thought they could rely on us too to to use their skills for good. <laughs> cool. Thanks. One of one of the things that uh, all of us are thinking about is exactly not to exploit this kindness is going forward. How can we reward such involvement in the community? Um, can we find funding uh, to, to provide to them as a small grant or fellowship? So this is definitely our next step. We don't want to launch our next step without um, this plan in place. Yeah, we've actually sort of been um, phasing things a little bit. So we've been looking at the first phase being a uh, viability phase. So yes, we have people who are interested. We have mentors that are available. Phase two will be, will someone sponsor us to run the second round in some way? And then eventually a third phase might be, can we do this full time? Because we would love to. <laughs> so um, have you spoken to Julia Lowndes about this? Okay, then yeah. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Any more questions? Um, how did you advertise to the to find the mentees or the other projects? So you only talked about finding. Uh, if I understood that correctly, you talked about mentors at the moment. So um, that was also networks, but slightly differently. So rather than reaching out one on one, this tended to be more like very loud Twitter calls and please retweets and mailing lists and happy, friendly, spammy behavior, uh, <laughs> which I think went pretty well. Yeah, we posted on the Carpentries mailing list, we posted on SSI mailing list, um, but with the credibility that some of the members from these communities were already in our expert community. So we did like a friendly spamming for sure. Um, and we did not get a lot of application until the last day. So we were like, okay, we will have six, me six mentors then. But over midnight, we start to get like all the applications. So if at all you're launching something like this, don't get disappointed if application don't trickle in soon. Any more questions? Okay, uh, so we had the second part of this. We wanted to talk a bit about value exchanges. Uh, so basically breakout rooms, you've probably been in one of the discussion groups earlier today, but we were planning on um, sending you all out to some breakout rooms. I think two or three breakout rooms looking at the size of the number of people we've got here. Um, and what we were gonna suggest is, so we've talked a bit about some of the value exchange we've been trying to give where we've been giving um, skills to other people longer term we maybe hope that some of the value exchange that will come back is that they will pass us on to others or maybe even help us mentor in later rounds um, but it might be nice to ref to spend some time reflecting on value exchange for an open scientific project that you're working on um, oh thank you chris have a great evening lovely to see you here um, so what we're going to suggest is uh, hop into a breakout room we'll put around about four people in each room uh, Malvika, can you prepare those rooms? Cool. And the things, the things, we have three questions there. What kind of things do you give to others in your open scientific community? Or if you don't have one, what do you wish you would be giving? Um, what kind of things do you get back? Is it experience of, of things that you get from the community? And what skills or resources would be mutually beneficial to teach or mentor within your community? So just sort of reflecting on whether this is something you could apply yourself in your own communities and what the exchange there would be. Uh, so is that vaguely clear? Can I have some thumbs up if it's good? I have uh, some thumbs up. Oh. Can you can you put the the, the three the, the written down somewhere the, the three they questions are, that we have? Right. Yes, okay. I've just yeah, highlighted we'll them in the them. document. Right. <laughs> Cheers. Okay. Um oh yeah, and we have a note area, so maybe nominate a scribe from each of your groups uh, just to write down some of the notes. And Malvika, send people off when you're ready, I think. And if you need help, just remember you can ask for help. 
Okay, oh, so uh, we will have two rooms with three people and one room with four people. And I'm opening the room now. Hello. Welcome back, everybody. Hello. Hello. We're not all back yet, are we? Mavika, you're the only one who can tell. There we go. <laughs> right on time. All right. Um, we're going to go to each room, each team, let's say, uh, who can give us a report out of what they discussed and what, what was so insightful for them. So I think the room one is the room where Esther, Matthew, and Tudor were. Would you like to report something and share with everybody? Yeah, I'm gonna go give it a try. Mm -hmm. And Esther and Matthew can complete me. Uh, mainly we discussed a bit about building a community with our colleagues and generally, one point is to have to know the community you were working with. Uh, Matthew's example was that he has a big community he's working with, but with a lot of diverse people, he doesn't really know. So a survey could help on getting to know these people, getting to know their backgrounds and what their preferences are. Uh, sometimes you might be working with a lot of experienced people and while it's really good to have that sort of experience on your side, you may have a lot of people who are pretty much stuck in time and they don't want to go on some different technologies, different applications, etc., because they didn't work with them and they're more used to something else, even though that's going to make their lives better. And where did everything go? Okay. Uh, and generally, it's easier to make a culture change if you have some allies with you and build brick, brick by brick, get a person, another person, and try to build with them and drive the change with other people. Last thing, if you're trying to build a bigger community, it's really difficult, but it's really necessary to make sure you keep out the bad people out of your community. I think that's it. Thank you so much. So can we go to room number two, Alessandro, Emma, and Renier? Uh, so for me, it was really hard to get uh, a general theme uh, from our group. We, we talk a little bit about teaching kit uh, to people and be rewarding with jobs, but uh, it's also like uh, this knowledge that you should not be teaching kit for first time contributors that is just arriving to your project. So uh, they might get scary <laughs> and walk away. Uh, do you, Alessandra and Emma, do you want to add something? So I think it's that we can go to the room number three. So just to sum up that your room, your room, your room discussed a lot about um, what could be the best way to get a, an absolute beginner onboarded in your community? Is that right? Uh, we try to answer. We try to answer the questions for 
each one of us uh, and you kind of didn't have enough time to try to get a, a room okay. conclusion. <laughs> Thanks for the notes. Um, okay, so we'll go to Yasmin, Richard, Erin and Sian. Does anyone else want to pick it up or? Okay, I'll try to summarize. Yeah, so now you see all of the notes, but I will just try to summarize the most important ones. I see all of are very important, of course. Okay, so encouraging uh, people to be open and um, it is important to realize that it is difficult to get everything right at once. I mean, completely changing to a full open science practice, but it is okay, it's not a problem. It's important to start somewhere, taking small steps and uh, also uh, recognizing and acknowledging uh, all of these practices uh, and improving things already in the daily workflow uh, is a big uh, achievement. Um, so from people's point of view, it was uh, nice to see when people are actually learning things, even the ones which were most resistant in the beginning, then they start uh, really understanding and agreeing and even applying it in their practice. That's quite uh, nice to see. And, um, and that uh, you see that they are getting excited about the things you were excited in the first place. It's very uh, motivating to see. And in terms of uh, the mutual benefits, uh, the ability to collaborate, so uh, uh, that it is, it takes effort, but in the end, uh, yeah, uh, it is worth the effort and to be open and uh, sorry, inclusive and share the things with each other. Um, sorry, I, it's not the easy thing, but I tried to cover everything. If I'm missing anything, Please, uh, someone from our group can join and complete. I think one of the one of the point that you mentioned is that not everything can be done at the same time. And one of the advantages of working openly and transparently is to be able to communicate that with people, and therefore uh, they would be willing to accept some of the problems that may appear on the way. Anything else to add before we conclude? I think you pointed out there with being open about the progress because it also shows that whatever lack of progress so is part of expectation management and it removes the barrier of us and them, right? Because it's more open to see what's going on. Yeah, and, and then people can jump in if they have the right skill to help you do a task that you're not either willing to do or don't have capacity to do. Um, but definitely, if if you have this all written down as your value exchange, people have right expectations, so I totally agree on setting expectations correctly. Uh, you anything else to add? Not at this point. Um... I think we could just wrap up. I, we uh, imagine if we've uh, cheekily assigned um, some assignments to follow up. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. Yeah, we wanted to follow our own format of OLS because we uh, introduced you to that. So what we want you to do is to take some of the lessons that you gained by brainstorming or talking to each other and uh, put that in your project GitHub repository if you have any and invite people to comment on it if at all you want to use these lessons to develop your own um, project value exchange. Um, a lot of time it's also a great idea to invite people who are actually interested and passionate about these topics to form a simple working group so they can help you develop those. Uh, at the same time, as, as we mentioned in our talk, that these lesson material are completely open. So if you're building your own local communities where you want your uh, members to, um, to, to use it, to learn it, we are very, very uh, delighted to help you and facilitate that learning process for everybody. And before you leave, uh, please leave us some feedback what worked for you, what did not work for you, what would you change and what surprised you. And we are very happy that you joined us today.